Puma developers have just released a new product called Puma Dev, and this is a great successor to PAL because it supports a lot of features that PAL just did not support out of the box. Some of these features include WebSocket handling as well as SSL certificates. So if you are developing a Rails 5 application with Action Cable, with your Action Cable service built in and mounted within your application, then you may experience some problems if you're using PAL and you would have had to resort to just using Puma. So this is a great alternative to PAL because now you can work with your Action Cable sockets as well as if you need to test under SSL certificates, you now have that functionality built in as well. So there was a package called Tunnels before that you you could create a local SSL certificate that would work natively with PAL, but now you have all these features rolled into one package called Puma Dev. So to get started, we'll first uninstall our PAL installation. We can then update our homebrew. And once that's updated, we can then type brew install Puma 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 Dev. You can then run sudo puma dev setup and this will change the ownership of the etc resolver to your current user so that the .dev domain can be recognized locally. You can then call puma dev install and then this will install and start the service on port 80 and 443 of your computer. And you may get a pop up warning to verify your password. But once you do that, it'll create the SSL certificate and you should be ready to go. So at the desktop, I'll create a new Rails application called example. And ideally, we would want our browser to point to example.dev and then this application loads. So I've created this Puma D script and it'll check to make sure that you are within your Rails application. And once you are and you call Puma D, then it'll create the sim link for you automatically. So if you visit example.dev, you'll see that your application takes a minute to spin up, but once it does, you have it there live. And then you also have immediate access to a SSL environment for your application as well for testing. And if you look at the certificate, you will see that it was issued by the Puma Dev CA and it is a valid certificate. However, if you do have a situation where the ticket's not valid, and if that little warning at the beginning of each session is driving you nuts, then you are able to just download and install the certificate, and you can do that just by dragging the certificate icon on the pop-up onto your desktop and then install that as a trusted root CA. So to create the Puma D script, you'll want to edit your user local bin and then Puma D. And within here, we'll first just call the shebang and set the bin bash. And then what we'll want to do is create a if statement. So if the file does not exist, gem file, then we'll just say, hey, are you really sure you're in a Rails application? This is basically just looking to see, does this gem file exist within the current folder that you're in? And if it does, then we'll call else. We can then call ln-ls and then pass in our current directory. So you do need to pass in your full directory. And then it'll go to your home folder, the .puma dev folder. And then this is just capturing the last name of the folder from PWD. So in our case, this would be example. And then I did found for Puma to pick up the new sim link, you do have to call Puma dev dash install again. And then you can create just a little echo script that says, hey, here's your application it should be available at the base name dot dev or the HTTPS base name dot dev. Then of course you need to close your if statement, save your file, and then you can call chmod to make this a executable file, chmod plus x, and then pass in to the location and file that you want to make executable. Also created another script that would just basically undo these changes. And I just call this unpuma D and this is just very simple. It'll remove the link there. And you may need to call the puma dev dash install again to just pick up those changes. So it would no longer be available at that domain. 
So be sure to check out the documentation because there's still several options that we did not cover. For example, installing on a separate port that's not 80 or 443. You can also run Puma Dev in the foreground just by running Puma Dev and it'll look in the Puma Dev folder on your home directory to pick up all the different sim links that you have. You can also migrate your PAL configurations by passing in the dash PAL option. However, I didn't really care to investigate this too much simply because I'm not using this for anything too complicated and it was simple enough to just go into each one of my applications and call Puma D on it. Additionally, Puma Dev also uses a few environment variables that you can set to set how many workers or threads or even a config file, which it does default to no config how you would want Puma to be loaded. Then if you are in a case where you do have to kill your application and it's just not responding the way it should be, you can then call pkill-usr1 and then pass in Puma Dev. And with a little bit of additional setup, you also have support for Linux. And the script that we wrote for the Puma D should also work for Linux as well because it's using just some fairly standard commands. So with Puma Dev being a young application, I would expect a lot of changes, so you may want to keep your eye on it. Well that's all for this episode, thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.